Everybody knows all guests on Zaslo Show 2.0 are brought to us by the official beer of Zaslo Show 2.0, Johnny Cuba. It's our lifestyle brand, European roots with a Caribbean soul, a refreshing German lager in a can. Pick up a six-pack now at your local Sedanos, Presidente, Winn-Dixie, Fresco y Mas. Always drink responsibly, and don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra, stay tranquilo. Joining us here is our pal, Odyssey Sports. You better you bet. Nick Costos, who uh, I, I Nick, I got to tell you, I love having you on the program again because I got Zaslow Show 2.0 listeners. I'll get messages. Hey, you got to get Nick back on the show. Where's Nick? My listeners miss you, Nick. How are you today? Great to be back. And I appreciate the listeners very much. Uh, good to see you, my friend. And great to be on. So we got WrestleMania this week. It's WrestleMania week. WrestleMania is this weekend. So we got to get our pal Nick Costos on to talk a little bit about WrestleMania and what's going on there. But before we do that, down here in South Florida, we're in a territory we've never been in. The Miami Hurricanes are in the Final Four. FAU as well. We can't forget about FAU. FAU in the Final Four. Hurricanes Final Four. Each one game away from the entire country hating the national championship game, Nick. What do you make of that? Well, I already hate the NCAA tournament because of how this has turned out here. I, I love that, like, people are like, oh, yeah, I love when there's so many upsets in the tournament. Really? Like, you'd rather have this than Duke, North Carolina, and Villanova, yeah, you can't Kansas? Have too many upsets. I'm totally with you there. Yeah, and we've got too many of them this year. And that's not a shot at South Florida. It could be like, it could be like, 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 you know, the VCU against George Mason, I would feel that way. Um, I, I don't think it's impossible that you get FAU and Miami in the title game on Monday night. I think FAU is going to get there. Um, mm-hmm. The point spread, San Diego State's a one and a half point favorite. And like, I guess maybe you can make the argument that San Diego State like should be favored in the game. Like they, they did beat Alabama on the way there. I just, I don't know where the evidence is that San Diego State is actually better than Florida Atlantic. I think the game should be a pick em. I think it's going to be a really close game at the end. And uh, I like Florida Atlantic if you're going to give me one and a half or two points. So Florida Atlantic, Zazlo will be my bet. That's actually the bet that I like the most. On Saturday, the UConn-Miami game presents like a pretty interesting conundrum, right? Because, you know, UConn was trailing at the half to Iona in the first round. And then since then is basically, basically obliterated the competition, the second half against Iona. And then through that region culminating in just a total beatdown of Gonzaga last weekend to make the final four, the bugaboo though, for UConn this year and for Danny Hurley has been when UConn gets into close games, they foul it up. Hurley fouls it up. Think about the Big East tournament semifinal against Marquette, you know, not using timeouts correctly. Shaka Smart and Marquette winning that game to advance and eventually winning the Big East title. And then, of course, bowing out in the second rounds of the tournament to Michigan State. So maybe UConn's talent just wins out and they blow Miami out of the water and they win the game by 15 to 20 points. Like you can think what you want about Miami and be excited about, about Wong and Pack and, and Laranaga and how great this program has been and an Elite Eight last year and a Final Four this year. UConn's better. And that's not an insult to say that, but if Miami is able like to pull this magic out, basically since they've had since, you know, the four minute mark of the opening round game against Drake, a frustrating game for me because I bet Drake in that game and then bet Indiana in the second round. But Miami has been great basically since then. And if Miami can keep this game close with like five minutes to play, I trust Larinaga a lot more than I trust Danny Hurley. So here's how I would play this. If you think Miami can keep this game close, I would just bet them to win the game. Plus 200 on the money line. I think we either see, and this is like a really simplified way of thinking, and I could definitely be wrong. This is my opinion. I think UConn wins by 15 points or Miami wins a close game. You That's know how what? I see it playing out. You know what? That's exactly what I said to my son yesterday. My 14-year-old, we were outside shooting hoops. You know, I said, hey, are, are you pumped for the game this Saturday night? And and I said, I, I think if Miami wins, I think it's a close game. If Miami loses, I think they can get smoked. L- like that's I, – I don't think UConn wins a close game. I don't think Miami can blow them out. Uh, exactly what you just said is, is pretty much how I feel. Have you ever been to a Final Four? Yeah. Uh, like multiple times? I mean, you, you, um, said that, I went, you said that very nonchalant, like you're a regular. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, been in the, you know, we've been doing the sports media for a long time. Um, I think I've only been to one, actually. It was the VCU, Louisville, Syracuse, Michigan Final Four in 2013. Louisville beat Michigan in the national title game. It was in Atlanta. So that was oh, the only uh, one I went Was that Tim Hardaway, to. Trey Burke? That, no, that's the Michigan team that lost to Villanova. A number okay. of years ago, this is the this is like the Spike Albrecht Michigan team, and Albrecht like came up like hit like four threes in the first half against like Peyton Siva and Louisville, a pretty nondescript Final Four. But that was Shaka Smart's like introduction to like the national consciousness taking VCU to the Final Four. They got boat raced by Louisville in the uh, the first semifinal, and then at night Michigan got past Syracuse in a really close game. I I've never been to even a tournament game, so I've never been to the Final Four, 
And I I started perusing yesterday. I'm not going to go. I, I never really considered going Saturday night because got, we got WrestleMania going on. There's just too much happening. And I mean, what would you rather watch? FAU San Diego State or WrestleMania? It's not even close. <laughs> so I don't know which one you're referring to, to be honest. Uh, so I started I, I started looking at what flights would be like for Monday. Like if the, the, if it happened Saturday night, what are flights like Monday to get out to Houston? So like I'm very lightly considering Monday night, but I, I've never been to a tournament game. We'll see. I, I, it's got to be weird watching a basketball game in a stadium. I've never done that before. Yeah, it was it was it was a little strange. Um, and like if, I, if Miami beats UConn, Miami's going to be favored on Monday night for sure to win the national championship. So just something to think about. Unbelievable. Are you before we get to WrestleMania here? The Knicks a couple nights ago, they beat up the Heat. They win that season series three out of four. Are you excited about the Knicks? Are you in on it? Well, a bit of a Pyrrhic victory, right, with Julius Rand- Randall's ankle injury. So hopefully Randall's going to be yeah. back and like it will be good to go for the playoff series against Cleveland. Uh, yeah, really excited for for the playoffs against against the Cavs. I. The thing that that makes me feel good and the reason why I really wanted the Knicks to get home court in that series, the Knicks have been like an excellent road team this year. So I think if the Knicks are able to extend the series and like get it to a seventh game in Cleveland, they can definitely win that series. Whereas on the flip side, Cavs have been a great home team, not as great a road team. So I felt like if the Knicks could have gotten home court and like they're not going to, but like if they they were within shouting distance at one point a couple of weeks ago, where if the Knicks had gotten the four seed, I felt like they definitely would have won the series. Oh, I think it's better the other way around though. I think that, if I'm the Knicks, I like starting on the road because I feel great about being able to get one of those first two games. And then all of a sudden you got a Cavs team who has no experience. They're a little bit tight playing Madison Square Garden games three and four. Yeah, just just that like I'm always thinking like if it gets to a game seven, obviously you'd rather be home. The Cavs road record is below 500, which is like just not poor 10 to a championship type team. So I... I'm cautiously optimistic, like gun to my head. I would take the Cavs, but I'm cautiously optimistic that the Knicks can win that series. Uh, by the way, the Miami Heat road record this year, 15 and 23 Terrible. and, uh, and the Knicks and, and, and the Knicks kind of, kind of punked them yeah. on Wednesday yeah. night. So, yeah, so we're, we, we've had that, a guys. really, yeah, we've had a really, really frustrating. Game. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not easy to score 30 points a game when Jamie Butler doesn't get to the free throw line 25 times. Not, well, he, not that easy. I mean, you say that as if he's James Harden out there and he's tricking the referees, Nick. I mean, this guy earns every trip to the line. It's how he plays. Yeah, yeah debatable. Debatable. <laughs> we'll see. Are you enjoying this NBA season? It's been a weird season. I I really like the NBA. So, like, I always enjoy the season. I always think there's a lot of, like, fun storylines, like a lot of fun things to bet on. Like, right now, I think, like, trying to figure out what the seedings are going to be and, like, what the playoff matchups are going to be is pretty interesting. And and I'll say this, and just talk about the Heat for a second. I'm like, I don't like the Heat as a Knicks fan, but just, like, you know, objectively talking about it mm-hmm. here, where... I don't know what it was. Like, you'll know this better than me just because all these days bleed together for me and I'm not like laser focused in on, on on Miami and the heat where, what was it like a week ago or like a week and a half ago? Maybe it was like a week ago, right? I, I said on you better than you bet, like the heat are going to be the sixth seed. Like they're going to overtake Brooklyn for the sixth seed. And then Brooklyn obviously like blows them out this yeah, weekend. And now, it looks like yeah. the Nets are going to be the six now where I get that the Sixers have a bunch of stars and Embiid might win MVP. If it's Miami, Philadelphia in the first round, Philly totally would obviously you. be favored in the series. Totally but if you're a you. Heat, you're a Heat fan. Like yeah. you gotta feel great about yeah. that potential series now. Now, though, like let's say they're the seven. Like they're in the play and they win the first game, they're the seven seed. Like I know that the Eastern Conference final last year against the Celtics went to seven games. And I'm not like Miami's too good. Spolstra's too good a coach, too good of an organization. Like they're not gonna get embarrassed, like run off the court. Maybe they would buy Milwaukee, but like they're not gonna have to play Milwaukee, probably, right? They're probably gonna have to play Boston. Like they they're not beating the Celtics, I don't think. So I actually think like this last week of Miami basketball has been like really bad for the Heat as far as the playoffs are it's concerned. It's been a disaster. Where you want it to be the six. You do it, not want to be the seven. The schedule shaped up perfectly with their game last week against Brooklyn to overtake them. They lose that game. Now they're they're two back in the loss column, which means they're actually three back because they don't own the tie break with Brooklyn. They are not going to catch them with the five games to play. They're probably going to face Boston in the first round. And you're 100% right because if the Heat were playing Philly, Nick, I would pick the Heat to win that series. I would. And 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 it, and like, there are times when like I'll take like the Yankees to it, like beat the Astros in the ALCS, and people will say like you're a homer, and I'd say like you're right, like I am. Like that's not even a situation where people could call you a homer if you took the Heat to win that series because like what has Philly ever done? You can't. Do, trust you them. think like the, you can't trust them, right? You can't. Can't trust them. 
Uh, Nick. But you know what? You can trust them when they play Brooklyn in the first round. They will win that series for sure. <laughs> so, Nick, you've been to the Final Four. Have you been to WrestleMania? Oh, yeah. Multiple. Multiple. Yeah. Which one? Do you remember oh, yeah. which ones you've been to? Uh, I went to 28, which is uh, in Miami. Yeah. Which is Cena Rock, the first right. one. Yep. Uh, which is just, I mean, two of like the great mark out moments of my life in the same card, which is. Were you rooting for, were you rooting for Rock? Of course I was. Everyone was rooting for Rock. It was I awesome. mean, that, that was uh, a great crowd for the Rock that night, obviously. That was a great so, crowd. So that was the um, the end of an era. Triple oh, that H, was, Taker. oh, yes. It was end of an era and once in a lifetime. What a card. It was a great card. So the two markout moments are Michaels super kicking Undertaker into a pedigree and Undertaker kicking out, which was like, I remember looking at my friend that I was there with, like the people that were sitting around us, and we were all just like laughing. It was like so great. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, like when when you are obviously wrestling is scripted, but when you are faked out as a member of the audience and you are convinced something is going to happen and then it doesn't, and you have that moment where like they got me, that's when it's really great. So that happened. And then when Rock beat Cena, People were literally like jumping up and down, like in the aisles in the so at the stadium in Miami. It's so so twenty eight, I went to thirty in New Orleans, which wow. is Daniel Bryan WrestleMania. I went to the one in Orlando, which sucked, which is Reigns over Undertaker in the main event. Yep, I, I might be missing one, but those are the three that that stand out. But I've been to a bunch. I've been to thirty three, thirty four, and thirty seven, and um, yeah, it's it's so much fun. Obviously, this is going to be a really great weekend. Do you love the two nights? I mean, the first night, obviously, head-to-head -head with Final Four. That makes it especially tough for me down here with the Hurricanes. Do you enjoy it being two nights now? Yeah. I, I'm always of the opinion that more of anything I like is better. Like, more NCAA tournament teams, more teams than the college football playoff. I'm not a purist. Um, if I like something, I want more of it. I'm an American. That makes me a good red-blooded American. I do want you, more. Do you? Now, we, we don't know. And I, I was talking to my guy, Chris Van Vliet, yesterday. And we talked a little bit about, you know, Vince McMahon. And it's expected that he's going to be at WrestleMania. But do you believe that he will be on television? Because, Nick, this no. is WrestleMania 39. He's never not been on television for WrestleMania. It's never happened. No way. No way. No way. How could they put him out there? There's no, 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 I think no chance. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, what do you I, think? I, I think I, it could be a quick... Thing backstage i i don't know i i'm going with he will be on camera in some right, capacity so if he is maybe it's like on saturday night and he's like standing at like the foot of the ramp and he's just like welcome to wrestlemania and that's that counts. Roll. yeah that does count that counts so, yeah how about this like 50 50 and if it is that's all it is and that's the extent of it right right yeah i i, I think that could be it he's never not been on camera for wrestlemania so hey the main event uh roman reigns Cody Rhodes, give me some thoughts here. Uh, do you love the Bloodline storyline? Go ahead. Yeah, Bloodline storyline's awesome. Um, I think Reigns' heel run will go down, and I think people kind of already look at it like this. I think it's one of the greatest runs in the history of wrestling, professional mm -hmm. wrestling. Yep. Like, this run that Reigns has had as champion. Now, there is part of me that, like, actually, like, never wants him to lose. I, I, I don't want him to lose. He's definitely going to. I'm not so sure. I think he apt because Co Cody is DOA if he loses. It's over. Like it's done. It's absolutely finished. It's like when Reigns, the babyface, lost to Lesnar at WrestleMania a couple what that was, that was what, 33? One of the ones that you the were at? The first time that he lost to him, 31. Where Rollins no, cashed no, in? No, the second time. Oh, 32 were, in Dallas. 32 in Dallas. Well, 32 in Dallas was against Oh, no, Triple I'm sorry. H, he right? beat Triple H. You're right. It was the one that I was at. 34 in New Orleans. He lost one. So, right. so, like, Reigns losing that match where everyone expected this is going to be where Reigns That's right. Wins. We all thought like, he was going to win. Like, Roman Reigns is DOA at that point as a babyface. Like, it's over. Now they're able to turn him heel. The thing is, Co also, like, everyone hated Reigns as a face. But basically, his entire run. Everyone loves Cody. If Cody loses this match, I guess like the story that you tell is I like how much longer is the story if Rhodes loses? Because like the story has to end with Rhodes winning. Otherwise, like, what's the point of this? Like well, he's got to win. Unless the bloodline screws him and then he continues to feud with the bloodline and Roman. But, okay, oh, okay, so let me ask you. So then when does Rhodes win the belt? Well, I'm not I I'm not looking at it from that perspective, Nick. The perspective that I look at it is I think the bloodline storyline ends with Roman and Jay. 
Okay, like that could very well be true, but like not for the belt. I don't know. Maybe. No, it, no. It chance. started for the bloodline storyline started with them fighting for the belt. That's how yeah, it started. I, but like, is I I don't know that J, J, I like Jey Uso. He's awesome. Hall of Fame caliber talent. Is he someone that can uh, carry a main event? There, no, ch no chance. His nickname's no main chance. event Jay. No chance. I, I will actually say no chance. So like, but like, I think you have to think about things like this, like this, right? So Cody Rhodes is the hottest baby face in WWE, yeah. right? His story absolutely has to end or they screwed it up. His story has to end with him winning the title. And then whatever the hell happens after that happens after that. So if Cody doesn't win at WrestleMania this weekend, I think the question that you have to ask yourself is, okay, when is he winning? Because he has to win. You Otherwise, do make what's a good point? point about where does Cody go if he loses. That's a good point. So, like, so if Vince McMahon is booking it, that I mean, it could be like next month, and it could completely screw this up. If Triple H is booking it, then like the main event of next year's WrestleMania has to be Cody and Reigns again. Like it just has to be. Like I think SummerSlam is too soon, where the story has to be Cody works himself back into contention to make this happen. Also, like they did this storyline in AEW with Cody. He never obviously never won the belt, but this is the story. Like he has to win. I actually, and I love Reigns. Part, like I said, part of me actually like never wants him to lose. And he just retires like as the champion and he never <laughs> lost. Right. I think that would be great. He actually has to lose the belt. He has to lose on Sunday. Or I actually think it's like a disaster and I love him. How about uh, how about the women? Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley. Does that match have a lot of juice for you? No. I mean, Rhea, Rhea's a, well, because Rhea's a big star. I, yeah, she's I, great. She's a big, I, and obviously we all know Charlotte. Uh, I think Charlotte wins. I think Charlotte wins. I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me. I think Rhea wins. I think Rhea wins the title from her. I think Charlotte was kind of a placeholder to get the belt from Ronda to Rhea, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think Rhea is a massive star and this is really the start of it. So I, I, I well, like again, so again, like if Charlotte wins on, and I that, that's going to be an event like night one on Saturday, right? It if, seems like it. If, if Charlotte wins, Rhea Ripley is DOA also. Like it's over. Like it's over. Like she's never going to be taken seriously again on that level. She has to win. And like Vince would put Charlotte over probably Triple H won't. Like R the Ray Ripley will win. And speaking of Rhea, do you love Prison Dom? Are you afraid if you were to see Prison Dom walking on the street, would you walk to the other side of the street just so you don't make eye contact? See, this is like a great example of like long-term storytelling where like everyone knows, and this is where like wrestling becomes great, where you see something coming and like you don't care because like it's it's awesome the entire way and the story they tell. Like how long has it been obvious for that Ray's going to face Dom at WrestleMania? Long time. Like, like months, plural, like months, like many, many months. It was at least SummerSlam, I think, when the turn happened. So yeah. So like we've known for a long time this is what it's going to be. And like it's it's been great the entire way. Like the build's been like this is it's fantastic long term storytelling, and this is actually one where like I think Dom should win obviously because Ray gains nothing by winning, and Dom gets like nuclear heat basically for winning. He's got that X Pac I, heat already, Nick. Well, I actually disagree with that because X Pac heat, in my definition of it at least, and like I guess people's definitions could be different. To me, X Pac heat is. Like your music plays and we boo you because like we don't actually don't want you on the screen because like we don't like like go away. <laughs> like if you weren't on on TV next week, no one would miss you. I actually feel like people would miss booing Dominic Mysterio. So like people hate him because he's hateable because he's done a great job. Um, I guess there's a case to be made that Ray should win because like it caps off this story with like the good guy winning. I think it makes more sense for Dominic to win. And so he can carry because like Ray at this point, Ray's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Like what does he He's done it all. He's summited the mountain already. I would be surprised if Dominic did not win. I think Dominic wins. I think it could be. I think it could be Ray's last match. I was originally thinking that it was going to be a career match, and now they have not gone that route. I was thinking it could be a career match, and if that were the case, then Ray's definitely losing. But I, I, I think, I think, or Ray's maybe losing. they do that at SummerSlam, right? Like maybe, like maybe Ray, like so again, like this is. I always like to think of it as okay, like if X happens, then then what's Y? Like, what's next? Yeah. This is how they think, right? Like, with like, okay, like, where are we going after this? If Ray wins, then I think what probably makes sense is Dominic, like, uh, the, the storyline continues, and at SummerSlam, they do, like, like a courier match or something. I mean, can you imagine and, and the Dom heat? Wins. Can you imagine the heat if Dominic retires, Ray? 
Well, I mean, that's yeah, that's, like that's where you got to go. Like that's yeah, you're probably right. So like then, then Ray's going to win. That's where you got to go. Then, uh, then Ray's going to win because you can't have Dom win. I guess you could. And then Ray's like, I want another match against my son. I'll put my career on the line. That doesn't make a lot of sense, though, I don't think. Are you uh, is there anything else that stands out to you? Like, are you interested in Brock Moss? Are you interested in the Intercontinental? I mean, I love Gunther. I, I think he's phenomenal, man. Every match he's in is just a banger. Hell in a Cell, Edge, Finn Balor. Uh, does anything else stand? Asuka, this kind of new, uh, newish version of Asuka. She's going to fight Bianca Belair for the title. I do not think she's going to win. Does anything else stand out to you? Um, I can't wait for Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. I mean, the match is probably going to be like it's going to be sick. Yeah, like it's going to, it's going to be awesome. There and is you know going how, to be... and you know how I know that Nick because every match Logan Paul has been in is awesome. Yeah, and by the way, like every match Seth Rollins has is awesome too. So like the match is definitely going to be awesome. Like the the heat is going to be at eleven for this match, and the yeah. like, the crowd's going to be going insane oh, for Rollins. They, they hate Logan Paul. They hate, they hate Logan Paul, and they love Rollins. And like Logan Paul's probably going to win. And it's and he's gonna get booed out of the building, and and it's gonna be great. So I can't wait for that. Brock Omas is like an attraction match is actually like not terrible. I don't like think when it's Brock, terrible. Like when Brock f fives him, like the people are gonna go nuts. Like that'll be cool. Mm -hmm. And the match and like you know, Paul Heyman will book the match. It'll be five minutes long. It'll be all like suplexes and choke slams and f fives, and it'll be really quick and hard hitting. And it'll be done, and it'll be really good. Um, the tag title match is gonna be is gonna be exceptional. Right, with Owens and Zayn against... Do you believe against... Owens and Zayn are definitely winning? Are they taking the, the belts off of them, ending that, that long-time reign? Well, so again, like... So I think, like, everything kind of factors into everything else. So if you think Roman's going to lose, and I think he is, it's almost like, okay, if you think... I think you're probably right. If the next step for the bloodline is going to be Roman versus Jay... If that's what's next, probably is going to be what's next, right? Maybe that's SummerSlam. I don't know. What makes more sense for the bloodline to like keep the belts and for Roman to be like jealous of them mm -hmm. or for the bloodline to lose and it's like clean slate now it's like there's no belts involved in the storyline. It's just like blood versus blood. What makes more sense? I think it's probably... I don't know, actually. Like, I think it could honestly go either way. Um, I, I like I the idea of Jimmy. Now, I don't think they're going to, but I like the idea of Jimmy and Jay having the titles and looking at Roman and saying, we held up our end of the bargain. Or like Roman comes out, spears Zane, Usos win in cheap fashion. And then the Usos like don't return the favor and like Cody beats Roman in the main event. Oh, something okay. like that. Okay. So, so like, listen, like, and for the people listening to this right now, like, here's what's great about the way they book this is we can actually sit here and say like, there's many different directions they can go in. So it's going to be really fun to see like what actually transpires. So I, I kind of like, can't wait to see the direction they go in there and it'll telegraph, I think kind of like what they're looking to do next, which is totally okay. Cause I think it's going to be really good. Yeah. It's going to be really good. It's going to be really fun, man. Uh, real. I, I love being able to do this, man. You know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with this. I asked my guy Chris Van Vliet this yesterday, and so I'm gonna leave you with this as well. So a few nights ago, it's WrestleMania week, so I turned on. Let's watch an old WrestleMania. I put on WrestleMania eight. I wanted to watch a little bit of Bret Hart and Piper, a little bit of Macho and Ric Flair. So I put on WrestleMania eight, and the show opens up with just, uh, I mean, what a commentary crew of Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. And I'm like, I, I mean, just nonstop bickering, amazing from the get go. All right. So for you, Nick Costas, Mount Rushmore, WWF announcers. Oh, well, I mean, the, the, the two you just mentioned obviously are on the list. All right. That's two of them. Let's go. Uh, they're they're the best by like by like a wide margin. I, honestly, like I think you could throw Jesse in there also. Okay, Jesse Jesse the body probably. I mean, Jr. has got to be. So it's is that it's, your it's four? Difficult. You just did it. That's the four. Is that the four? Well, well, because it's like Michael Cole probably needs to be on it, right? Uh, Mount Rushmore's four, Nick. So you tell me. Um, Monsoon, Keenan, Ross, body. That's a good. That's a good one. That's a, so you're going nostalgia factor, like we're close in age. So you're going nostalgia pretty much like I. I well, you're a lot older than me. A lot older. How old yeah. are you? Yeah, 
I, I turned 40 in a couple months. Maybe <laughs> a, lot, a lot older. I'm two years older than you. Uh, but uh, like I Lawler, like you can make an argument for. It's just like Lawler was always like too cartoonish. Whereas like body was like such an unbelievable heel, oh, yeah. but he was also like shot straight though. Like he wasn't always on the side. Like he basically was like, like a real person that was watching and commentating. Like he would call Hogan out when Hogan was full of it. But in the same sense, like he would, if a heel were doing something stupid, he'd call the heel out also. He was great. And Heenan is the greatest like underhanded, like heel mm -hmm. commentator ever. Like his work and like uh, the Royal Rumble that preceded WrestleMania 8, Royal Rumble 92, which is the best Rumble ever. Yep. I mean, it is a tour de force masterclass. When Ric Flair enters three, he's whining the entire time that it's not fair to Flair. Flair wins. And then you have what is, in my opinion, the greatest ever post-match promo in the history of professional wrestling, which is Flair, Mr. Perfect, and Heenan celebrating Flair's title win. When Heenan goes, we're not the type of guys to say we told you so, but we told you so. And Flair goes with a tear in my eye. This is the greatest moment in my life to the Hogan's, to the Savages, to the Sids, to the Undertakers. Now it's Ric Flair and y'all pay homage to the man. Woo. It's the it's the best man. It's so good, too, because like you said, right when Flair comes out, it's not fair to Flair. It's not fair to Flair, which he said the whole match. And then in the end there. We're not the type of guys who tell you we told you so, but we told you so. It's a classic line. And like, also like seven is my, f I watched WrestleMania six, I think, but like, I was like not cognizant of both, not because I was too young, but because I wasn't into it at that point. Seven was my first one where I'm like, oh, like if ultimate warrior loses, like I, I'm on, like, I might like walk into traffic as a seven year old to savage in the career ending match. You watch WrestleMania seven, some of he the lines that Heenan has, like will make you laugh out loud. Demolition faces Tenru and Katow, and Mr. Fuji is the manager for Demolition, and he, like, cheats to help Demolition against the Japanese Tenru and Katow, and Bobby <laughs> Heenan goes, like, Mr. Fuji choosing money over country. I like that. Like, we'll make you laugh. Or, and when Sergeant Slaughter is facing Hogan in the main event, and Slaughter is, like, Iraqi turncoat, and Slaughter gets a two count and he then goes in Iraq. You only have to count for two. Like slaughter should be the champion. Just like he's, <laughs> he's like, he's legendary. So much Rest of it too peace. is so much is off color. It's so off color. Like, and would never fly today. I mean, just for instance, the first match I watched at WrestleMania eight, it was Tito Santana versus Shawn Michaels debut as the heartbreak kid on WrestleMania. And, and it's all like, me like Mexican. Jokes, oh my. Yeah. I, I mean, that move right there is called the flying tamale. And then the yeah, next one, yeah, this is, yeah. that's a flying burrito. I, yeah. It's so off color that you would yeah. never be able nope. to get away with now. Nope. Uh, nope. That's a good Mount Rushmore, man. Excellent. Nick, uh, we love having you on, man. Tell everybody how they can hear you, of course. Go ahead. By the way, I've got I've got beef with you. Yeah, um, let's go. You've got um, do you have your uh your bracket? I meant to text this to you. Yeah, and I like I, do. I don't know, it's something going. I got it. Yeah. So I had like it's a, still a real to me bracket uh, ultimate WrestleMania moment challenge is what Nick is referring to. Okay, Go so ahead. here was the beef that I had. The best match in WrestleMania history is Michaels Undertaker one in my opinion. WrestleMania twenty five, right, not the second one. Your opinion, yes, that's my that is my opinion. Um, which is when under when Michaels kicked out of the tombstone. Mm -hmm. That may be like the most shocked I've ever been like watching a wrestling match ever. And I was like, oh my God, like Michaels is going to win and like end the streak. And then of course he didn't. And it's just like magnificent. I think it, I think it's the best American wrestling match ever. Like I'm a big Japanese wrestling fan. So like I, I like like Okada Omega better, but that's just me. Um, and you seated that like an 11 or a 12. And I was okay, like, well, so I will add here. You know, I that should a, be that should be the number one overall seed. So I will add, I have a co-host. He did all the seating. OK, it's yeah. a bad job. Like, for instance, my favorite match of all time, WrestleMania, is Ricky Steamboat Macho. It's never going to sure. change. I'm a sucker for nostalgia. It's, it's a also, great match. It's also what hooked me at six years old on pro wrestling. All it's right? actually like a perfect wrestling match. If you go back and watch it so. now. There is there is no mistakes. Every there is no wasted movement. Everything yeah. is perfect in that match. I think it's I think it is I think it is a perfect, perfect wrestling match. And and my co-host Joey had it as a 10. I would have it as a, at, at worst a three at worst. So yeah, I didn't do the seating. Well, that's well for me. Like the four one seed should be Michael. Well, Staker. it was two one seeds because we did top thirty two. But go got on. it. Yeah. Um, Warrior Savage career ending match, and then like the the drama that came afterwards. Sure. And like Rock Hogan, even yeah. if like it's not like the best. Like Rock the best Hogan match. just lost in the Elite Eight, I believe. It went up against uh, Hogan slamming Andre. Tough draw. Tough All right. Draw. So what's the final four? 
Okay, I'll tell you. The final four right now, a one seed Hogan versus Andre. I'm going to update it tonight. One seed Hogan versus Andre. Three seed HBK retiring Ric Flair. Okay. Uh, two seed Rock versus Stone Cold WrestleMania 17. It's a brutal choice. And yeah, and it and it beat uh, Bret Hart versus Stone Cold. That was yeah. I mean, like the the two, yeah. That's and and the and the fourth one is a nine seed once in a lifetime Cena Rock. That's the final four. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but having having Stone Cold like WrestleMania said it's a great match. Also, has a terrible ending. Which one? The the Austin Rock WrestleMania seventeen with Vince coming in and like screwing Rock like and Austin turning is terrible. Yeah. I, I didn't like, vote. Wasn't my vote. Like that. That's like Outback Steakhouse, and Brett Austin is like Peter Luger. Like we're not even in the same ballpark here. It's a terrible job by your voters. You there should you all go. be ashamed of yourselves. There you go. That's the final four. It'll be completed by the end of this weekend. And you agree with me, right? Oh yeah, I voted for Bret Hart Stone Cold over that. Yeah, like I, Bret Hart's like, my guy. Are your are your listeners an abject embarrassment? I say I'm, they I'm a little are. embarrassed by that. I'm a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> I'm a little bit. My listeners, you guys are an embarrassment. Are uh, you an embarrassment? How do you make that? How do you make that vote and look at yourselves in the mirror? How do you How do you wake up in the morning knowing that you voted that? Nick, tell everybody how they can hear you. Of course, go ahead. Yeah, you better, you bet. Weekdays, 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern, Odyssey.com, the Odyssey app, Twitch, YouTube, uh, radio stations nationwide. Uh, we're also on uh, tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern, radio stations nationwide at all the same places you find us. Uh, talk two hours of Final Four talk. Can't wait. Excellent. Excellent job, Nick. Always love having you on, man. Thank you. Yeah, wishing everybody minimal sweats when he bets the absolute very best of luck.